So recently I got the question, why is piping so important? And more importantly, why is it so important for the chemical or process engineer? Let's check it out. Hey, what is up guys? Welcome once again to the channel. It's always great to have you back. And today we're going to be diving into a topic that may seem mundane or even boring, but it's quite important. Actually, it is one of the top crucial roles that you're going to encounter in the industry. And I'm talking about piping. Yes, piping system. And yeah, I know that it may sound boring and actually I'm pretty sure that when you picture yourself as an engineer, you're working either with big machinery, maybe you're working with reactors, you may be working with a combustion system or maybe even producing or a manufacturing line and so. But you're actually never thinking about pipelines. But let me tell you guys that if you're going to be working with chemicals, either liquids or gases or vapors, you're going to encounter a lot of pipelines. And believe me guys, when I say a lot, is a lot of them. So definitely it's quite worth checking out this discipline and more importantly, understand why is it so important. And to tackle the question, I really want you to ask yourself, why do you think piping systems are important for a chemical or any industry process? For sure, the very first or natural answer will be, yes, we need piping systems because we need to transport our liquids or our gases, let it be our fluids. But then the question arises, why do we use cylindrical piping systems? Not only that, they're actually built from a certain material, typically stainless steel or maybe even PVC material, plastics and so on. Why not use any other type of transportation systems? Why not move them in open channels, which will be way cheaper if we don't invest in cylindrical shapes? Why not use ducts or any other type of piping ideas that you may encounter? Why do we use the cylindrical piping system? Well, you're going to see that piping systems are very convenient and efficient. Yet, doesn't mean that you're not going to encounter any other type of problems, nuances, or technical stuff regarding piping systems. And as I stated before, it is quite convenient. And it's not only because it occupies a very small amount of space, physical space in the factory, but also because of the nature of its design being cylindrical, it's going to decrease the friction losses. Not only that, they are quite cheap to produce, cheap to transport, to install, to operate, and to maintain. And apart from all that, it's quite flexible. You can adapt any piping system, you can increase, you can add fittings, you can add any kind of support or fittings to improve your task. For instance, you need to send your product from the background floor all the way to second floor, Make no worries, simply add an elbow that goes vertically. You need to increase the flow rate while decreasing velocity. Make no worries, simply add an expansion to your system. And more importantly, guys, you need to shut down the factory or maybe decrease the flow rate of the product. Make no worries, you just need to shut down a valve. And for sure, this may be very straightforward for you guys understanding how piping systems work because we have some at home, in the office, schools, hospitals, and many other places. So the general idea is in our heads. But more importantly, as process engineers, we need to be able to understand the technical things that go behind what we see. More importantly, the very first things that pops into mind is friction loss. And this is for sure one of the top things that you're going to see in the industry. The friction loss due to pipe walls, due to fittings, due to valves, and due to anything that is inside the pipe flow. And this is essentially the very nature of liquid flow. You're going to encounter a lot of this. So understanding why velocity affects so drastically the friction loss. Why do we need to add pumps in order to counterbalance such friction losses? And more importantly, why friction loss carries a pressure drop with itself. It's something that we're going to be studying as process engineers. The important aspect here is to be able to model this mathematically and understand the basic principles behind it. Another thing that pops into mind is process engineer equals optimization engineer. And yes, one of the main tasks that you're going to encounter is that you need to optimize the process, either decrease friction losses, improve energy use, and avoid extra spending in operational costs. And it's no doubt that piping requires a lot of energy due to friction loss. It may be something between 5 all the way to 20% the amount of energy of the process that's going to be lost only due to piping systems. So understanding the principles of friction loss, pressure drops, is definitely going to come in handy as a process engineer. 
Also, whenever we talk about maintenance, it always pops into mind the piping systems. Either the ceilings, either the type of pipe, either corrosion maybe, or blockage of a pipe, it always comes into the maintenance schedule. Not only that, guys, all these things will either decrease the flow rate, spill chemicals around the chemical plant, increase or change the temperature profile, or maybe even change drastically the pressure drop along the pipeline. All these factors are going to definitely be affecting the performance of our process. And one other aspect I want to tell you guys is that flow control is very important for a chemical plant. Whenever we imagine a process, we figure out that the continuous process is a very natural thing to do, but actually is not natural at all. We require a lot of systems to be carried on continuously in order to ensure that the process is going to be carried out in a continuous manner. And piping systems are for sure the fundamental key in order to ensure the correct flow rates. Whenever we're talking about fully opening a valve, maybe partially closing a valve, or fully shutting down a valve, we're talking about how we manipulate the flow rate, and flow rate being the essentials for a continuous operation, hence its importance. And finally guys, understanding that piping systems go in hand with safety and hazard procedures. For sure we understand that safety is one of the top concerns whenever producing a chemical, and yes, this is entirely true. We always work a lot with ensuring proper design piping systems that are going to avoid leaks, ruptures or inadequate flow rate. All this in order to ensure safety for our process, but also for our personnel and for our equipment. And of course, there's a lot of other things relevant for piping systems, but for now we understand that this is a very serious topic, not only because it is quite fundamental for quality control, but also for process specification, for safety, avoiding hazards, and more importantly, optimization of the energy, improving operational cost, and finally, being able to design and operate further piping systems. Undoubtedly, piping systems are important not only for chemical processes or pharmaceutical industries, but for any kind of industry. Whenever we talk about water systems, compressed air, nitrogen, argon, or any other type of gas, we're talking about piping system. And this is great news for you guys, the process engineers. This means that there's a lot of requirements for engineers to design and operate such systems. So now guys, you know why piping systems are so important. On my behalf, that will be it guys. I'll see you in future lectures.